Tesseract. Sonder. Ah, those vocals. Not nearly as... Mm, as the, uh, well, except for King. But we'll get to that in a minute. Hold on. But yes... I liked this better. Much better. Because it hit a lot more of the things that I was expecting from Tesseract. I just... <laughs> yes. Luminary, as you've heard, just heard. Daniel, like, the thing is, this is like the fourth studio album the band has done. And as far as I'm going to tell you, since Polaris, this, this album, well, this band, I should say, has been, probably in all honesty, the best band to have come out of this decade? By far? And yes, I'm kind of debating on it myself because there are some other good ones out there. Periphery is pretty good. But it just seems like with this band, they seem to always keep me engaged. Even in their softer moments. Though this album is, compared to their previous records, is far darker. There are other, they're more known for having a brighter tone. And being more bass centric, whereas this album is considerably much darker and kind of sort of a little more mid heavy from what I hear. This album seems to, but in the way that I think some fans who preferred one, even though really they just prefer Concealing Fate, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. You prefer Concealing Fate. If that's the case, you just have the EP and you wouldn't have bought this damn thing. I wanted to collect all of it. And you're just doing it like I am and getting it as a collector's item. Because you really liked Polaris a lot. Because that so far has been my favorite from them. A lot of people have bitched about their snare, the snare issue. But I don't see it as much. I mean, I definitely don't hear it as much either. But it doesn't bother me in the ways that some people would consider, I guess. It still sounds good. It still sounds good, despite what some people will say about the snare in the mix. But, you know, that's a mixer's thing. I'm not a mixer, so. Well, Luminary, it's super heavy. It's kind of a concept, but I can't really, for the life of me, remember what the concept is. Regardless, this album is shorter than what you normally get out of Tesseract. And we've got at least... Set, like like the last record, we kind of get seven tracks? Yeah, I like the last album, there were seven tracks. This one also has seven tracks, but somehow shorter than that record. Like I said, it's also darker, but in the sense that he's starting to kind of leave off... Because the thing is, Daniel Tompkins hasn't always been the main singer in... in Screamer, I should say, in this band. Because by the second record of Altered State, you... Let me... Let, hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold... You know what? Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Of course, y'all started... If I can fix my name thing. Alright. With one. Then... That's when we had, and he was more screaming. That's when the band was kind of sort of considerably somewhat trying to combine gent and metalcore sounds together and essentially just came up with a progressive metalcore style before they just kind of went more all out prog metal, kind of sort of with Altered State. Tompkins left the band. He was in some other band that's name escapes me, but I'm hearing that second album they did when he was in the band, that band, before he left that band to come back to Tesseract on what is my favorite of their albums, Polaris, and I think that record 
which was what introduced me to the band and is still honestly the my favorite of them, even though a lot of people will still argue and there's so many arguments at this point of who's the better front man and all this stuff. It's like, well, after this album, especially if you're even considering Cages, the very end of Cages and how he's still able to hold up to enunciate his screams that well and then still sing and, you know, at least hold a melody better. And though it pops out more here for some reason, here and there, sometimes it seems like it pops out more with Astro Hair on this album. And I thought it popped out just as much here, but it seems not to be the case. But when it comes to, but yet when it comes to writing good melodic vocals and good hooks, as with like in Polaris here, I mean, I mean, this is still good. I mean, everybody loves not love the track not Nocturne. You know. But everybody loves Concealing Fate when it comes to that. With this one, even though that was an EP before this. And they just they furthered that with Tesseract to, with Altered State, which consists of bo of four different parts. Um three to two up to three to two tracks, depending on which parts from of matter to of mind, of reality, and of energy, altered states. Four different altered states. And it's all kind of comes together. Nocturne being of the first in the Of Mind series of that, which is really good. Uh, but Polaris for me is what it was. Dystopia really is a good start. Hexus is really good, especially if you really want... Which further proves my point about how Daniel Tompkins is, just knows how to write a better melody when it comes to his choice of vocals. And it's even more obvious in tracks that when he opens up, like even Utopia Tourniquet really is great. Just basically all the first one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, that's nine tracks. I'm sorry. I will correct it. It's nine, not seven on this one. But yeah, and everything up to Phoenix. But even that being said, Messenger is still good. Cage is still delivers really good. And especially the way it ends itself, and Seven Names is a great closer. This album still is probably my favorite and the best overall album to listen to. I don't know why that fell out. That was weird. Um, but anyway. And now we have this album, the second with Tompkins, and he brings back a lot more screams, and they're a lot more hard-hitting and heavier than they've ever been before. And uh, more so in the track King which furthers the darker tone that this album supposedly has. I do feel as though with this, it's definitely reward. It's it's so short to the extent where it kind of leaves you wanting more, at least the way they end things off with the Arrow. Some people will pretty... And I kind of do agree with the Christian Doyle. I doubt you watch this, but just shout out to you, man. Smile, I guess, is kind of does come off demo-ish, especially after you hear the way the production is from the rest of the album. And then following this up into the arrow, eh, Smile's okay. I mean, it's still kind of better than what I guess we got out of the single version, which I'm still, which now that it's a single version, it makes more sense because with how short it was then. But yeah, I prefer the version we got off the albums, but it's so so here. Mirror Image is just one of the examples of what I wanted throughout the most of this album that I didn't entirely get. And that was when it came to like things like in the beginning of Utopia and stuff. Which was just... And even Hexes. So, even more so with what you get out of Hexes. And that was how he brings it. And some people do not really talk about Beneath My Skin. Vocally, it's actually one of those... It's actually pretty good. So, I'm surprised I only talked about that one, but... Yet everyone seems to talk about Juno. And it took the third listen for me to, like, get it, but the first couple, I'm like, okay, people are hyping this up a little too much. It's still good, but I still prefer... Yet, even with that being said, I still prefer Kane over this. And most, for the most part, this comes off, like, leaving off from Polaris and bringing up a little more of one. But also, I guess there's some aspects of altered state here, but it's more 
more whatever Daniel Tompkins' involvement with the band has been going off of that and into this record. And it's not bad, but I, I, the thing is, like this in the Perfect Circle record I just did, just reviewed prior to this, I really preferred and enjoy, I enjoy both albums a little, both albums a, pretty well, but this I enjoy more because I got a lot more out of it, or at least within by re, more rewarding repeated review, repeated listens, as opposed to that album. And, I mean, Juno's nice, Beneath My Skin isn't bad, but a mirror image, just, the way he does the vocals on that is just something I was craving for on this album. On this album that I kind of sort of didn't fully get. When I, even by hearing all the songs they've released as singles. As the dust begins to fall, I see an image of it, of it. I can't, I can't do it right, right now. It's better, but... You get where I'm going from by the, the of it all. Keeps me away, keeps me away. Oh, at least I did that part. Or last part, right? Oh, Jesus. And that, just that, just the way he d handles those lines. It's just, mmm, hit <laughs> those highs, motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went a little little John on that one. Uh, <laughs> But yes, Orbital's not, if anything, Orbital's not a bad transition into Juno, and Arrow's not a bad transition out of it, and closing this album off. But overall, I enjoyed this album. I would definitely highly more recommend, uh, in my opinion, for someone who wants something more digestible, something more uplifting sounding, go to, go to Polaris, man. Go to Polaris was my first listen, and then I eventually listened to other ones. I know, I know Lucas LeCompte, if you're watching, I know you prefer one, it's okay. It's really Concealing Fate that makes up the, most of the album, anyway. And the other tracks are just so-and-so here and there. It does have some nice grooves in a couple of the first tracks, but which is more metalcore, but yeah, it's whatever. I really am... Glad Tesseract is still around. This album, if it does anything, is proved that, especially when it comes to Daniel Tompkins as well, himself, the rest of, in fact, most of the production is done by one of the guitar players. That's name seems to escape me here. If, if I can just pull it up. Uh, the Ackle, yeah, I'm probably going to butcher your name, dude. He'll even involved with the com composition. It seems like, I mean, they've changed the bass player during the, by the time of the third album, by the time Daniel Tompkins would come back in the band. But his vocal, I mean, his vocals really shine on this record. And production-wise, Michael Canny, Connie, I'm forgiving me, dude, if I'm butchering your name, forgive me. You're not a bad guitar player, dude. At all. And your production, and you're probably even better producer. Because um, clearly you know how to get Daniel to do some crazy awesome vocals. Gymnastics, if need be. <laughs> well, of course that's even more so him. Hold on, let me see about that. There's a separation. Some some albums, they, just, they do weird credits with the... But anyway, with vocals, I guess. Anyways, I so enjoyed this album, and I think you will too. If even if you aren't, uh, haven't gotten into Tesseract to start with, you will enjoy what Tesseract has to offer. Overall, Sonder, though I'm trying to remember what the actual word means and to why it's being used here. As overall, this it it rocks. And with time to grow, it has potential to be master class. So far, this and Firepower are neck and neck here for album of the year. As far as I am concerned. At least until Tool and Tremonti bring it. <laughs> Tremonti is so-so on that right now. 
the new track that 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 tone I'm I'm digging the lighter tone, Mark Tremonti. Anyway, all right, guys, what did you think? Leave a comment below. Let me know. As always, guys, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. Also, you know, rock the like button, thrust if you must. Uh, same on my Facebook page. Like, follow there. Links in description below. Again, as always, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. And I'll see you guys in the next video, whatever that may be. Take care, y'all.